we're back for segment three. Meeting Jessica was fun. Wow. Our, uh, she's dynamite. And, and really, all four of the focus missionaries are really wholesome, wholesome young people. You know, some say that if, if, if we counted everyone who lives on the University of Louisville campus as a parish, it would be our biggest parish. Yeah, well, so I'm, I'm glad we're getting and, uh, and, some peer ministers. Pope, Pope Francis is saying, go out. So go this out, yeah. really was, it was a good segment. That's I enjoyed great, great, meeting great. her. Okay, now, a special time. We've done this before. Um, uh, people write you letters and send you emails, and we get things on our webpage, and people send things to our question places in the, in the, on the, on the uh, web page of the diocese, they ask questions. So this is a time to um, not stump Archbishop Kurtz, but yes. ask you some questions, and we'll go through as many as we can. Just we to, may do uh, both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, exactly. very good. Exactly. So let's do some questions, Archbishop. Um, be, of course, because of the events of the past year in particular, and over decades, of course, there's been a number of questions this year about uh, abuse and the church's response. And, and one had to do with something that's now occurring just now, which is the Holy Father and convening of world meeting of, of the uh, heads of bishops' conferences. And something like, why did, it, why did this take so long? Can you, can you fill us in a yeah, little bit? It's, it's, a, it's a good question. Well, first of all, Brian, I think uh, anytime we talk about issues concerning abuse, we have to begin with the lament. I mean, we have to be honest and say, you know, people were hurt. Yeah. People were hurt by church leaders, whether it was a bishop or a priest, and we can never condone that. And we need to reach out to victim survivors, obviously. Um, you're right that, that, uh, that, that part of the issue uh, back in November, as I, as, as I was disappointed and even frustrated that we couldn't move even more quickly. Now, as I look back on it, and as you know, I'm, I'm part of that small task force that's, that's helping us locally in the United States prepare, I, I see the wisdom in having uh, us learn from bishops in other parts of the world mm -hmm. and also maybe be an example for them so that we, we it's an act of unity. And uh, hopefully from, I, I don't expect uh, that there'll be quick responses even from the large group. So we have to remember that this doesn't stop us from continuing to act as n not only what we're doing locally, but every diocese throughout the United States is, I hope, taking strong steps as, as we are, both to educate as well as to ensure that we are, we are safeguarding young people. Uh, one of the biggest issues that we have in the United States, of course, will be making sure that if a bishop has done something wrong, that that, 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 that bishop is accountable, that, that there's a place to report him. And, and we're moving forward, and I have every hope that in, in, in our June meeting, that with the benefit of whatever happens in Rome this month, we'll be able to make some crisp decisions. The, uh, let's say the will to, to act is, is solid. Now the question is, let's make sure that whatever action we do is permanent and actually can, can help us in the long run. I, I know it will be a comfort to our people to, that under your leadership, you, you're, you confirmed that say, we say vi vigilant in, in ensuring safe places and proper reporting and these kinds of responses. Absolutely, and communicating. One yeah, of the yeah, things that yeah. we learned is we don't talk enough, we don't tell people enough what's going on and find creative ways to do it. So the Archbishop leadership briefings, I hope, have continue and continue to be a, a help to people to get knowledge. We should put up the website to make sure people can go to it no and, to go. and look at the frequently asked questions. The more information they have, the better. Yeah. Now, one of the questions around this is just a, a particular one, Archbishop. Um, some have asked if a priest has a, a credible case of abuse and, and, uh, and they're removed from priesthood, uh, perhaps, um, is, is the sacrament that they've been part of with someone, is, has that changed? Are, yeah, is if somebody got still married valid? by a priest who, yeah. who, who now is laicized, yeah. well, what yeah. happens to that marriage? That's yeah. a, you know, I was... I was uh, surprised, not just with the question, but with how often it's asked. Yeah. Uh, uh, the short answer is that, uh, that the early church, believe it or not, took up this question, to what extent is the validity and, and fruitfulness of a sacrament based on the holiness of the minister? Okay. And actually there was a, there was a heresy, pretty much there's some heresy named after someone <laughs> throughout the church, and this was donatism. Uh, and donatism basically said that if the priest isn't holy, the sacrament's not valid. Uh, one of the, that was, I think, in the, in the uh, second or third century. It was, in the, it was early in the life of the church. And so the, the short answer is to say, no, 
the, the grace and power of the sacrament comes from Christ. Okay. The, the minister, the priest, is supposed to be the vehicle but, and should be holy, hopefully for the fruitfulness, but the validity depends on the power of Christ's grace. And uh, that's, a, that's a wise, yeah. wise uh, teaching of our church. That, that's, that's good to yeah. know. It's a comfort for me because let's face it, mm -hmm. you know, if I get angry with somebody or, or, or impatient, they say, oh my gosh, he's a heck of a guy to be giving me Holy Communion. So, yeah. so I, I want to be patient, I want to be kind, but I want to make sure that it's Christ is the one who is the power and I serve Christ, not the opposite way. Yeah. Very good. Christ is the source. Good. Right. Okay. Uh, 2018, back then we did that show last month where we talked about the good news stories of the, of the year. But yeah. one of the things we got to recognize that in the past year there's had tough times with violence. Violence in our country, violence even synagogues and churches yeah. and so forth. And, and let's talk a little bit, Ar Archbishop, how, how are we going to try to prevent violence, particularly Yeah, really in our safety within our churches. Yeah. People say, I come to Mass, is, is there going to be violence? It, yeah. uh, it's a shame we have to talk about yeah. this. It's, it's a shame. It, it's, it's part of what you and I have talked about with civility mm -hmm. within our nation, that when people disagree, they should not have to be disagreeable. They should not have to result to, to violence. And so mm -hmm. it says a lot about our families and our schools, making sure that we're, we're preparing people uh, to, to, to treat disagreement in a better way. Now, I will say this, and, and you're the one that actually told me about this, that one of the safeguards we have, believe it or not, are, are, are hospitality ministers, the people who welcome. If they stay alert, and just the fact that they're there welcoming people itself is a deterrent from somebody who might come in because often people who uh, are, are wanting to do mischief or who are violent, they want to remain anonymous. Yeah, yeah. So that in itself is something that I was happy to hear. We, 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 we already have some safeguards in place, but I know Bill Zoller has been working along with you in communicating with our parishes some what I would call common sense approaches to ensure that we have, have safety within our area. and. Uh, Thank God our people are vigilant. We never want to rest on our laurels. Uh, we've, we've had safety within our parishes, and any time uh, we have even mild disruptions, uh, I'm pleased with the fact that people are responding quickly. It's important that people don't just turn their heads. If they see something that they think is suspicious. That's the slogan that the uh, police chief actually specifically said to what? us. The old, see something, say something. That's it. And, see and, some, I like that. See something, say something. Exactly. Very, very important. But, you know, I, I say this with regret because it's a shame. Yeah, yeah. With our, uh, we need to, to Im Im impact our culture better. Yeah. Well, I wish we had wow. about it. But three segments just I on know. questions. I want to do one about you before we wrap sure. up our show today. Um, I know you've talked before about your personal vocation story, but I wondered, I never knew this, did you ever think of something besides being a priest? If you weren't going to be a priest, what would you have done? You know what? I should have thought more about things because, <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, the, the short answer to that is no. Uh, oh. it, it was no one from my family was ever a priest. Uh, uh, I, my first thought, or the calling from God came probably when I was in 10th grade. Later on, as I look back, I think, well, well if I weren't a priest, what would I be? Um, I enjoyed debating in school. I, I, that, that was in high school. I was on the debating school club. And um, I, I, I might have leaned towards being a lawyer. Do you have a bad opinion of lawyers? I'm not going to tell okay. you after that. Probably that notion of representing the cause of yeah. someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Would, would have been it. As you know, I became a social worker afterwards, and, and so it may have been social work, but, but I'm, I'm thinking of lawyer in the sense of representing the good cause of another person. Oh, priests are mediators, too. That's yeah, exactly that's right. right. Very exactly. good. Thanks, Archbishop. We'll, we'll have more questions coming up, no doubt, in another show. Thanks, everybody, for tuning into the February edition of Conversations with Archbishop Kurtz. See us again next month when we come back to be with you.